to understand the evaluation of the acid-base disorders, I'm going to show you three case studies that included some difficult mixed acid-base conditions. The case one, we do have a 60-year-old male who present to the ED from a nursing home. You have no history other than he has been breathing rapidly and is less responsive than usual. The important parameters you can read here, you can make a note on a paper to understand it. Serum sodium concentration is 123 millimol per liter. The chloride is 99 millimol per liter. The bicarbonate value is 5 millimol per liter and the pH is 7.31. The PCO2 in this patient is 10 millimercury. Let's start to evaluate this patient. The first thing that we have to see the difference between the normal pH. Is there any or not? Yes, we do have a lower pH. So this meaning this patient is suffering of an acidemia. The next one, to evaluate what is the primary problem, is whether it is a metabolic or whether it is a respiratory. We have to look at the PCO2 value and the bicarbonate value. As you see here, this patient has a PCO2 of 10 millimercury, while the bicarbonate is 5 millimercury. What do you think? What could be the problem? If you look at the PCO2 value, that's lower than normal. So that's a respiratory alkalosis. So the pH should be shifted toward the alkalic milieu. So this cannot be the underlying problem. Only the bicarbonate value can explain the changes. And that means we do have a metabolic acidosis. The next step, we have to calculate an ion gap. In our case, the serum sodium is 123 millimol per liter, while the chloride is 99 and the bicarbonate is 5. So the anion gap is 19 millimol per liter. What do you think? Is it bigger than 12? Yes. So it meaning this patient has anion gap metabolic acidosis. The next question could be, is the cause exogen or endogen? So whether the patient ingested something or not. How can we decide this? Yeah, to measure the osmotic gap. What is the osmotic gap? You have to take twice the serum sodium concentration and you have to subtract the glucose and the urea. In our case, the urea is not given, so you cannot calculate osmotic gap. The next one, we have to see whether this respiratory compensation is adequate or not. What is the expected PCO to base of the Winters formula? We have to take one and a half times the actual bicarbonate plus 8 plus minus 2. So the range in our case is 13.5 to 17.5. What was the PCO2 value? 10 millimercury. So what do you think? Because 10 is less that we are having here, right here, the expected value, it meaning the patient is going to hyperventilate more than is needed. So the patient does have an additional problem, such as, yes, respiratory alkalosis. The next one, because we do have an anion gap acidosis, do want to see whether we do have other, un other underlying metabolic disturbance. For this, we have to calculate the corrected bicarbonate. The corrected bicarbonate is the anion gap changes is correcting the actual bicarbonate. In our case, 5 plus 19 minus 17, that makes 7, and that means 12 millimol per liter. So, the corrected bicarbonate is less than 22, 
So this patient has a additional non-ion gap acidosis. What is the next? How can we figure out what the cause is of the non-anion gap acidosis? Yeah, you have to calculate the urinary anion gap if you had the urine values. Sodium, potassium, minus the chloride. If it's very negative, less than minus 10, there is no problem with the kidney, so that has to be some GI problem. However, if it's bigger than plus 10, you have to think about a kidney problem, renal tubular acidosis, especially the distal type. The next case, we do have a 42-year-old female who has type 1 diabetes. And now she has a flu for four days and with, together with the incessant vomiting. So she cannot stop vomiting, very frequently vomits. She presents to the ED two days after stopping insulin due to no food intake. Now that's a bad because this is the first that they are learning that we have to have an insulin without any food intake because the basal insulin is needed. We do have sugar in our blood, so this sugar needs some insulin to be uptaken. Now let's see the parameters. Serum sodium is 130 millimol per liter. Chloride is 80 millimol per liter. Bicarbonate is 10 millimol per liter. The pH is 7.21. And the PCO2 is 25 millimercury. So let's start the evaluation. The first thing to again, look at the pH. Is it less than 7.4? Yes. So it meaning this patient also has acidemia. The next one is whether this process or this uh, abnormal acid-base balance is due to metabolic or respiratory problem. We have to look at PCO2 and bicarbonate. Is the PCO2 is less than a normal, the 40, so that's again a respiratory alkalosis. So this cannot explain the decrease of the pH. However, the bicarbonate can explain it. So this patient does have a metabolic acidosis. Go on, next one. Calculate an ion gap. In our case, sodium is 130, chloride is 80, bicarbonate is 10, so that means 40 millimol per liter. So, we do have an anion gap metabolic acidosis. Let's look at the respiration. But before we go to the respiration, what could be the cause? Now, in our case, because this patient has type 1 diabetic uh, mellitus, and especially he stopped the insulin administration, she has a very high chance to develop diabetic ketoacidosis. So if you measure the ketone bodies, possible, it's very high. Next one, the respiratory compensation is adequate or not? The expected one ranging between 21 and 25 millimercury, and she has 25, so she does not have any other respiratory disturbance, so, so she has a normal compensation. Because we had an ion gap metabolic acidosis, we can evaluate whether we do have an additional metabolic disturbance or not. Let's calculate the corrected bicarbonate. 10 is the bicarbonate value, 40 is the anion gap minus the normal anion gap, that means 38. 38 is bigger than 25, so it meaning this patient has Yes, an additional metabolic alkalosis. Now, what could be the cause of this metabolic alkalosis? Possible the vomiting. Hopefully, now you can see how you are going to evaluate an acid base balance. See the last case. She is a 30 year old female and a bone marrow transplanted patient with neutropenic fever, has been receiving multiple antibiotics, including amphotericin B. You are called to the bedside for her fevers, rigors, and dysphagia. Serum sodium is 125, chloride is 100 millimol per liter, bicarbonate is 8 millimol per liter, pH is 7.07, .07, PCO2 is 28, 
and the potassium is 2.5. Let's start the evaluation. Look at the pH. Why? Well, it's very acidic. So this patient again has acidemia. Now what caused this acidemia? Let's look at PCO2 and bicarbonate. PCO2 is 28 millimercury. Again, this is less than 40. So that's an alka, respiratory alkalotic processes. However, the bicarbonate is decreased. So that's a metabolic acidosis. Let's calculate an ion gap. So theorem sodium is 125. Chloride 100 plus 8 means 17. So that's bigger than 12. So we do have a, an ion gap, metabolic acidosis. What could be the cause? She had neutropenic fever, infection. So an inflammation that causes lactate acidosis. You should measure the lactate. And if the lactate compensates the anion gap back to normal, you do have the direct answer that yes, it's connected to the lactate acidosis. Next one, the respiration is adequate or not? Expected PCO2 is equal with 1 times 1.5 times 8 plus 8, that means between 18 and 22. And she has 28. So what does it mean? She could not hyperventilate as much as needed for the normal compensation. So she has a respiratory acidosis due to the inadequate compensation. So somebody could have respiratory acidosis having less than 45 millimercury of carbon dioxide. It's depending on the compensation or compensatory situation. Next one, because we still had an anion gap acidosis, let's see is that any other metabolic disturbance? Let's calculate corrected bicarbonate. Actual one is 8, and anion gap change is 17 to 12, is 5, so this 13 millimol per liter. So she has an additional non anion gap. Metabolic acidosis. What could be the cause? Ha amphotericin works. That's an antifungal agent that makes pores on the cell membrane, and this can cause a diffusion of the hydrogen in the distal tubular system. So, possible the causes of the amphotericin B treatment, and that causes renal tubular acidosis.